Hey, how's it going everybody? Sarasota Tim, coming to you from beautiful Sarasota, Florida here in South Florida on the West Coast. Well, I say it's beautiful, but we got some gloomy skies, but it's kind of a reprieve because I don't have that sun a mile from my head beating down on me. So before the raindrops roll back in, uh, I'm making this video and I first would like to apologize for not making morning chat and you're only hearing from me <clears throat> here local time is five after five p.m. And I know that I'm notorious uh, for making multiple videos uh, in one day starting early. Uh, and that's not gonna change. It will be right back to normal here soon. But I wanted to share with you a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a, I just made a medical video about a friend of mine and now I'm making a medical, a medical video about me. And we all know that health is wealth. I'm 66 years old and I'm relatively healthy, but I do have an issue with my eyes. I have a um, disease called glaucoma. And a lot of it is my fault on the uh, level that I have because I've been a healthy person most of my life and I was uninsured, I was self-employed, and unless I'm dying, I don't go to a doctor. And when I couldn't see anymore at 40 years old, which was nothing more than losing your ability to read good when we lose that muscle in our eye that gets weak I understand and we can't read uh, and you need readers a simple pair from Walmart or drugstore and you're good to go uh, but then I started noticing uh, some other uh, you know decreasing vision and cloudiness and I started thinking about cataracts and finally I got on Medicare and I had um, coverage so I went to an ophthalmologist First, I seen an optometrist, and he determined that um, if I didn't see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist in, in the next six months, that I would be blind. So as you can imagine, I was alarmed, and I went straight to an ophthalmologist. Uh, that's the real eye doctor that does surgeries and stuff, not the eyeglasses doctor. And he did all these tests, and yes, I have what they call glaucoma. And most of you that have been watching my channel, you know about my vision issue. So I'm over there in West Palm Beach on the east coast of Florida. I see these doctors and then I'm trying to get out and become a traveling YouTuber with an RV. And this doctor has got me ball and chain to his office to come in, check these pressures and give me these drops to take. And it's just a real pain, really, you know. I mean, I just find it very annoying. But I gotta tell you, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I gotta tell you, I've learned my lesson. You know, when you see something abnormal, a uh, lump on your skin, or you're not seeing right, or you don't feel right, if you got insurance, or if you don't have insurance, and it's something that you know, it's not the virus, you know, like some cold, and then, you know, a little bit of NyQuil is gonna help you out. You gotta see the doctor. So, I get this surgery done, and it was a fail. They put a little uh, a stent, uh, like a splinter, uh, like a straw, in my eye and it's to help with drainage that we have in our eyes it fluids uh, that keep our eye pressure low our eye pressure needs to be between 10 and 20. mine got up to 40 and that's when glaucoma progresses exponentially and faster you start to lose your vision glaucoma is you lose your peripheral it comes in very gradually you hardly notice it till finally beep, gone <laughs> so you don't want to go blind. Uh, nothing worse of all of our five senses, in my opinion, than being without eyesight. All right, so I went to the eye doctor today. I'm finally gonna to get to the point, right? And I left West Palm Beach. I'm living in Sarasota. I got insurance. I changed it to PPO. I still own the disadvantage plan, but I can go to other doctors. And I picked an, uh, an eye doctor that actually was the, the agency. They're a big agency that I saw the very first time that told me if I didn't see an ophthalmologist in six months, I'd be blind. So I'm back with that same, but he, not him, because he's not an ophthalmologist. So they have this glaucoma specialist. And today was my appointment day. To September 1 was my uh, start date because I moved. When you move and you're on Medicare, you can change your policy. They want you to change your policy ASAP. You can actually be disenrolled by not reporting your address. So, 
I moved, I got my new insurance. It always takes effect the first of the next month. Here it is the first, I got an appointment on the third. Today, I went in, I met a doctor who was uh, very impressive to me, a young, uh, strong, good looking, knowledgeable, friendly. He checked all the boxes. This guy, our chemistry really hit it. I like this guy. And he came very highly recommended too. So they do all the tests, the vision field tests. Well, actually that's gonna be doing, uh, that's gonna be happening in two weeks. But anyway, they did these other tests, you know, dilated my eyes, they checked the pressure. The pressure was 21, 25, the bad eye, and 21, the good eye, which has still got glaucoma, but anyway. So I tell them about the surgery I had, the drops that I was on. I'm getting new drops in addition to those drops. I'm getting another surgery, and he wants to do it within a month. Big airplane going off uh, up here from SRQ. That's a big one. And um, another surgery. A surgery, uh, I had the name of it, um, uh, uh, something shunt. And anyway, there's two other types of surgeries I can do besides the one that failed. The one that I got done was uh, no, it didn't, it didn't do anything bad to me, it didn't help me, but there's no, no problem. There's two other surgeries. One is, has a high risk, but you don't have to take drops anymore. The other one has a low risk and a high success rate, but you will remain on the drops for the rest of your life. Uh, and that will hopefully keep the pressure down. So I was leaning towards going ahead and staying with the drops. I have Medicare now. And uh, with the more success rate after having a failed operation. And I, I asked the doctor, I said, you're me. You're sitting in this chair. I'm your father, whatever. Um, what would you do? And he leaned towards uh, the one that is still gonna require drops. So that's where I'm at. Uh, the good news and the bad news. Well, there is no good news because I have glaucoma and I asked him, uh, they had actually, because I'd used this doctor from a few years ago before moving to West Palm Beach, they had my records there. So he was able to see pictures and images of the progression of my glaucoma. And he said, you know, first of all, you got to lose 30% of your vision to even be determined to have glaucoma. I said, oh, really? So what, do I, what have I lost? Like 40, 50%? He said, more like 80, 90% in the left eye. That, folks, was alarming. So when he said, I'm gonna put you on some additional drops, and I did tell him, and I'm gonna be honest with you too, that when you gotta take drops day and night, and you, you got two different kind, and the doctor said to wait 15 minutes in between them so they don't mix, you know, let one soak in or whatever, and then you take the next one. You get complacent and you get where, hey, are these things even doing anything? And I skip a night, or I skip the one drop, or I forget. And he did kind of get on to me and said, you know, you still gotta take your drops, you know? And so when he told me about the, uh, the progression and where I'm at, now I haven't, I don't know if it was 80 or 90% when I was in West Palm Beach, or if that's just an increase, probably is. And um, I'm still feeling the dilation in my, uh, in my eye. Now these new drops I'm gonna be on is gonna cause redness. So in my future videos, I'll wear some sunglasses uh, to not be such a freak looking to you. Or you might not, you know, you might think I'm pulled one over last night, you know. But no, it's just the, uh, what the medicine's gonna be doing. But he does wanna do it right away and he said he's not that busy in the next 30 days, so that's what we're gonna do. And that's an update on me. And what I wanted to tell you about why I'm very thankful that I did go. This is how cheap I am. We all know I'm cheap. Um, they wanted to do something today when I made this appointment a few weeks ago before my insurance took effect that was gonna be $70 that they said the insurance does not cover. 
and that they need to do that. And I thought, I got this PPO, I got this insurance. Why do I need to pay, you know, the $45, uh, what do you call, um, specialist fee? Why do I got to pay anything extra? So the cheapness in me was like, I'll just call another ophthalmologist. I'll find myself somebody else. I mean, or I said, you know what? I'll go in there and I'll say, is it really necessary? It's not going to cure me. Is it going to hurt me? I mean, do I need it? Is this some kind of, uh, you know, like the dealer when you buy a car and they want to charge you the, you know, the mop and glow, you know, the wax. That they, that's what I call it. Pinstriping for $400. But actually it is something that's necessary. I think it's a field vision test. But guess what? And I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you. I got there and I was going to cancel and maybe call somebody else. I'm so, so glad I met this doctor. I feel very, very confident in him. And I feel like I'm going to have a successful uh, surgery. I'm not going to, you know, s recuperate any because once the damage is done, you can't, it's irreversible, but we're going to stop the acceleration where I'll never go blind as long as I take my drops. But not only did I not pay the $70 because the test wasn't done, but I was informed that we'll bill your insurance. And if they don't pay it, then you're on the hook for it. And so I said, okay, but you know what? When I left today, they didn't even charge me the office visit specialist fee. So, I mean, what a blessing, right? And, and here I was going to cheap out and call somebody else to save $70 when I didn't even pay it today and I didn't even pay my specialist fee. So I'm saying all that because I'm just being honest that that would have been very foolish on my end. And now I'm very happy that I'm going to be moving forward again with a new eye doctor, getting surgery, and I'm sure my PPO uh, Medicare insurance plan, my disadvantage plan, is gonna cover everything. Uh, in fact, um, talking about Johnny Vegas in a previous video, he's also on a disadvantage plan, and he showed me his bill uh, that so far uh, for his heart stuff. You know, this is some serious things we're doing. He's been in the hospital for you know, a week or so. 0, 0.00. So there you go with your disadvantage plan. I highly promote it. Uh, either way, if you can afford a supplement plan for your insurance on Medicare and you don't mind losing um, four to six thousand dollars a year for premiums and having to pay for dental, hearing, uh, vision and all, all that kind of stuff in addition to your health policy, go for it. I'm going to make a video about it again soon, talking about Advantage plans versus supplement plans. Uh, and I'm going to make another video regarding collecting your Social Security. Uh, last month, apparently the algorithm picked me up again, and tens of thousands of people are watching the Social Security videos that I've made, multiple ones, one or two in specific, uh, that are continually getting comments, questions, and very much appreciative of the fact that they are discovering that they get more money by collecting their Social Security earlier than later. And they understand about not giving away your life for a little bit of money to start living your life. So we're going to get in and we're going to delve into that a little bit more in some future videos so that if you're approaching 62 and you want to live a life uh, because nobody's promised tomorrow and, and live more of your life and not give away more of your life. Uh, for a little bit of money, I'm going to give you something to think about and ponder, and many people have, and they pretty much all come to the same conclusion, that this is the best way to go. And I don't care if you got a 401 or pensions or other monies. What I do care about is if you collect your Social Security early, at any age actually, that you don't have any debt. And we're going to talk about debt and my newest um, what do they call that word? Um, the procurement, the uh, acquisition right here of this newest debt that I've incurred, that I've promoted. Don't get debt. Don't make payments. Don't. We're going to talk about that in another video about uh, why, how to buy a car, 
if you should buy, if you should lease. Is it a good investment? Is it a terrible investment? We're going to talk about it. But right now, I just wanted to share with you and ask you for prayers uh, for the upcoming weeks. For me, also, we asked it for Johnny Vegas in an earlier video that the doctors will be guided and directed and this will be a success and I can get my pressure down and I can get my new drops starting tonight or tomorrow whenever my drugstore gets them ready for me. And I will stay uh, on them, regiment, not in strict and not skip days and, and do what I got to do because I got to do it the rest of my life, apparently. And we'll all have a good time. We're all going to keep it positive and Everybody must realize, no matter what your health conditions are right now, things can change. And health is wealth, folks. Whether it be an eye issue, a, a shoulder problem, a back problem, herniated disc, you got some dialysis going on, you're diabetic, um, you're starting to have some mental uh, things. There's so many things that start to break down. Because when you're 50 years old, you're already well past half of your age. Nobody's going to live to be 100 years old. Hardly. So at 50, you're already past the halfway point. Why would you want to give away more of your life for any longer than 62 to finally start enjoying and doing what you want to do? Because nobody's promised tomorrow. Always remember each day to crush it.